Hello friends, my name is Zachary Stockhill from RetroactiveJealousy.com and in today's video I'm going to answer another viewer question about Retroactive Jealousy and FOMO. If you've been benefiting from my videos and you'd like me to keep doing this, you'd like me to make more, please take a moment to let me know by clicking the like button below, making sure you are subscribed to my channel, and do me an extra favor and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time new videos come out. Okay, Retroactive Jealousy and FOMO. I always kind of enjoy these questions. So W, we'll call her W, writes, Hey Zachary, I just watched your most recent Q&A video on your partner doing something with their ex that they wouldn't or haven't done with you. How would this translate to a non-sexual context? Due to COVID, my partner and I haven't been able to do many things together, such as travel, meet friends, and move in. I'm currently struggling with the fact that we haven't met many of the milestones he's had with his previous girlfriend around this time in their relationship. She's saying that she's been with her boyfriend for two years and her boyfriend was with his ex. <laughs> the pronouns are confusing there. Her boyfriend was with his ex for about two years. While I know that we're in the situation because of COVID and finances, I'm finding it really hard to not compare. Would really appreciate your advice on that. I think many retroactive jealousy sufferers are facing similar issues during the pandemic. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you very much, W, you stay safe as well. First thing I'll say is, you know, when I was reading your, your comment, my first sort of suggestion or impulse is just to offer, uh, hope that you offer yourself a bit of understanding and self-compassion. I'm recording this video in June of 2021. We are over one year in, well over one year into the global uh, coronavirus pandemic, and a lot of people are in your shoes. A lot of people are dealing with similar issues to what you're facing many, 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 probably millions of couples around the world who haven't even heard of retroactive jealousy are facing the same issue where they're feeling kind of frustrated in their relationship because they feel like they would just want the freedom to do whatever the hell they want without all these travel restrictions and all the rest. And as I often say, long distance relationships are extremely challenging in the best of times. You throw in a global pandemic and obviously that situation becomes even harder. So what I'd say other than that is, you know, try to practice some self-compassion, practice some self-understanding and be aware that there's a lot of people facing this situation. And at the same time, if you feel frustrated, stifled, uh, whatever with the situation, go easy on yourself and go easy on your partner. You know, it's almost unfair. Well, it is unfair really to compare any pre-COVID relationship, particularly a long distance relationship, to the COVID era long distance relationship. Because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a traveler, I live internationally, I've been traveling abroad for many years now, and my life has completely changed as a result of COVID. COVID's a big reason why I started upping my YouTubing <laughs> because I was missing more social interaction and even just getting emails from people and connecting with people that way and, you know, getting feedback and getting more feedback about my work this way has been, has been really great because I can do obviously a lot less of this in person right now. But I would say try not to compare your COVID relationship, for lack of a better term, to your partner's pre-COVID relationship because they're so, so different. And frankly, you know, I don't want to overstate this too much, but if you are currently with someone right now, for anyone watching this who's in a long-term relationship, COVID is presenting challenges to all of us. And frankly, I think COVID could make your relationship even stronger. You know, I was going to compare it to like almost, you know, living through a war or something. Obviously, it's not that serious. Hopefully, your life isn't in danger. Hopefully, your partner's life isn't in danger. Certainly, some people are in those positions, but, you know, I don't mean to compare it too much to like a war, but when you go through a really, really challenging experience as a couple, in a lot of ways, you find out who you really are. You find that your relationship has been stress tested to a certain degree and that gives you resilience that you can build on moving forward. It's a better indication. If you can stay together during tough times, it's a far better indicator of the strength of your relationship than going through a relationship where there are no bumps in the road. Perhaps going through a relationship pre-COVID, there's just less challenges there. So you're not as clear about exactly what you guys are made of because you haven't faced serious challenges. So. I would, I would caution against comparing your relationship to your partner's pre-COVID relationship, but if you're gonna do it, in some ways, I think that this COVID challenge could make you stronger as a couple, you know, compared to your boyfriend's pre-COVID relationship. Obviously, I don't know you, I don't know the relationship, I don't know the details of your partner and his relationship and all that, but these stress tests for relationships 
are absolutely crucial. Another example is traveling as a couple. This is, you know, perhaps ironic that I'm using this example during the COVID, during a response to a question about COVID relationships because travel is so difficult right now. But, you know, a similar kind of scale of, of challenge is when you go from simply dating to traveling with your partner and basically living with them 24 seven, particularly when you do it in a place like India, like I've done several times. Um, where it's somewhat chaotic and, and all the rest. It's a real stress test for your relationship. And in those moments, during those challenging times, you really find out who you are. So I hope you find that at least somewhat inspiring because I, I get that COVID relationships are very, very difficult. COVID long distance relationships, absolutely. But if you survive it through this, I think you could survive through a lot more. So it's actually not entirely a bad thing. That said, I would also encourage you to just start planning for the future. I'm sure you're doing this already, but you know, you can really start visualizing your life because COVID's not going to last forever, hopefully. <laughs> Knock on wood. It's not going to last forever. And already, you know, huge parts of the world are easing up, easing their restrictions. Things are getting better. So start planning an exciting future. I'm a big advocate of trying to live in the present as much as possible. Longtime viewers of this channel know that as a squirrel crawls on my roof. I'm a big advocate of living in the present, but obviously sometimes it's really, really nice and inspiring to have something exciting to look forward to. So I, I would say just don't, you know, idle hands are the devil's playthings. I'm sure you've heard this expression. You don't want to just sit around and stew because that's not going to serve you. And it's certainly not going to serve your boyfriend, not going to serve your relationship. So get excited, start planning. And at the same time, realize that this challenge of COVID could actually make you stronger down the road. So there you have it. A few thoughts on retroactive jealousy and FOMO. But what do you guys think, all the people watching this video? Are you in a similar situation right now? Do you struggle with retroactive jealousy and FOMO, particularly in the era of COVID? If you are, or you have any questions for me, or you just want to offer some feedback, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below this video. Be sure to click the like button if you dig what I'm doing in this channel and you'd like me to do more. And if you really like what I'm doing in this channel and you'd like me to do more, please be sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell as well to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks again for watching and I will talk to you again very soon.